everyone. Thank you for joining me today. My name is Wesley Boudreau, one of the financial advisors here at the Retirement Group. Today we're going to cover just some of the different questions we've been getting recently from ExxonMobil employees, those that are uh, you know transitioning to retirement and those that may be farther out. We've been getting a lot of questions here over the last uh, couple months, uh, either through the webinars or through meetings and phone calls. So we're going to go through some of those today. Before I do get started, just a quick reminder, even though we've been working with ExxonMobil employees quite extensively for a long time, we are not endorsed by ExxonMobil, nor are we employed by them as well. But a quick refresher for those of you who do not know or do not remember who the retirement group is, uh, we are an independent financial advisory firm that focuses on working with corporate employees and helping them transition into retirement. We've been doing this for about 30 years, and uh, for a large chunk of that, we've been doing it with ExxonMobil employees. The reason we actually focus on a select number or select few companies is it allows our advisor to have a deeper understanding of your benefits plans so we can help you through that transition process. So items like the pension plan, the 401k plan, retiree medical, life insurance, things like that. At the end of the day, if you need to sit down with somebody face to face, we can probably still accommodate that. We do have advisors across America, but obviously this day and age, we can uh, we can do meetings via web meetings, um, you know, phone calls, emails, all that communication is available to you as well. The best thing to take us up on if you have not done so, or it's been a while since you've done so, is to run a complimentary cash flow analysis. I'll go through some questions, but a lot of the uh, a lot of the answers really would be entailed in running a cash flow analysis, and that's going to give you an idea of what your specific situation looks like, and are you on the right path for retirement for your retirement goals, whether it be looking to retire in five years or one year, or you're trying to decide to retire this quarter versus next quarter. How do the pension plans run? Uh, you know, options run through that. So we'll go through all that, all those different options with you uh, on a one-on-one -on -one basis and let you know not just now, but how your portfolio or how your retirement picture would look in 10, 20, 30 years down the road as well. So it gives you that financial information as to when to retire. And then it's up to you guys, you know, you and your family emotionally to figure out if you're ready to retire and go through those steps as well. So let's get into some of the different questions. Uh, before we do that, uh, let me just kind of give you a quick refresher as far as the interest rates, because that's one of the biggest questions on everybody's mind. Uh, so far this year. And now the Exxon Mobil pension plan is a classic defined benefit plan, in which case there is a formula that looks at your uh, years of service, your final average pay, a 1.6% multiplier, and a social security offset to determine what your single life annuity is going to be. From that point on, if you want other options like a joint survivor or a period certain or a lump sum, those are all calculated off of that single life annuity. So if you're doing a joint, <clears throat> excuse me, if you're doing a joint survivor or period certain, there's going to be more of a um, exercise more on the hook for potentially paying out longer. So your actual annuity is going to be a little bit lower. And then if you want to take that lump sum and try and essentially recreate that paycheck yourself, that's where they go and take a look at interest rates in order to determine what that lump sum amount is they're they're going to give you. So if you look at the seesaw here at the top, uh, you know generally speaking, what's going to happen is as interest rates change, they have an inverse correlation to the lump sum. So when interest rates come down, which they were during the pandemic, we actually saw lump sums rise to the highest we've ever seen them. Now the opposite's happening. The interest rates are going up and that lump sum is coming down. Unfortunately, it's been the most dramatic fashion we've ever seen. This is the quickest interest rate update we've ever seen in the history of the pension plan. And honestly, one of the quickest interest rate updates we've seen in the history of, uh, of the country as well. So what that's done so far in 2022 is drive down those lump sums quite dramatically. Uh, and let's kind of get into some of that. But um, before I do, I'll zoom in on this in just a moment. Let me give you a quick refresher as far as how those interest rates work. Uh, so let's say that you go through there and your single life annuity is going to be $3,000 a month for the rest of your life. Then Exxon is going to look at, okay, how old are you? Let's say you're 60 years old. Look at life expectancy tables, which may be 86. So they're saying they're on the hook for the next 26 years to essentially make monthly payments of $3,000 a month to you. Then they go out and look, okay, well, based upon that 26 years and the current interest rates, what's the net present value? And that's how they get that lump sum. Now, as far as the interest rates, what they use is gonna depend upon how old you are. Uh, you're either grandfathered and you're using the old GAT rates, which is the uh, the average of the 30 year treasury at 95%. Those are gonna be lower interest rates, which tend to be a higher lump sum. But again, that's gonna be based upon your age and your years of service. And most people are not at that level anymore. Uh, for most of you, it's gonna be the segment rates, uh, which are uh, first, second, and third segment. So the first segment, is going to correlate to the first five years of retirement. Second segment is going to be for years six through 20. And the third segment, years 21 and beyond. So for most of us, that second segment, it covers 15 years. It's going to cover the bulk or a large chunk of our retirement. So that second segment has a pretty high weighting. So let's go ahead and get into some of these actual numbers so we can show you where they are. But what they do is they use the average of the uh, 
uh, of the last two months of the prior quarter. So right now we've got the interest rates here for the first quarter of 2023 in blue at the top. We're at 4.14%, 4.94%, 4.88%, and the grandfather is staying at 3%. But we look at it right now in fourth quarter, that next line down, we're at 3.44, 4.7, and 4.74. So look at that second segment. We're looking at about a 24 basis point change um, between the uh, between fourth quarter and the first quarter of next year. So what that means is roughly about a 1% change is going to equate to uh, generally anywhere between an 8 to a 12% change in your lump sum. So let's just assume 1% equals 10% for simplicity. So that 24 basis points or 0.24% means your lump sum is going to drop again from the fourth quarter to the uh, uh, to the first quarter by another 2.4% roughly or so. Um, now, again, this is going to uh, potentially continue to rise. We've seen the interest rates in, uh, in October um, move up as well. We won't know again until, uh, until after we get to, until, excuse me, until January after we get the November and December rates uh, announced uh, in order to figure out what the second quarter is. So it's really important to kind of keep an eye on this. And there's been a lot of, uh, a lot of hammering of this over the last year. So a lot of you, they're still there. A lot of the pains already been felt as far as that drop in the lump sum. So hopefully it will kind of slow down. But if you look at that red figure at the very bottom, that 2.27%, that's actually how much it changed from uh, from first quarter this year to uh, the first quarter next year, about 2.27%. So we're looking at about 22% drop we saw in lump sums. So if you had a million dollar lump sum in January, it's now probably down to below $800,000. Uh, so again, it's really important to kind of know this if you are taking that, uh, that lump sum, if you're taking the annuities, this does not have an effect on you. I think we'll get into some questions on that as well. So we'll go through a couple of different questions that, again, like I said, have been uh, uh, questions we've consistently been getting from uh, from employees, uh, whether it be on the webinars or uh, on our one-on-one -on -one conversations. So first question, um, I keep hearing about the grandfathered pension. How can I find out if I'm grandfathered or not? Okay, so I, I showed you that chart and kind of alluded to it. Uh, right now, that th is 3%, so it's, again, better than the segment rates, which gives you a higher lump sum. But you got no choice on this. This is based upon your age and years of service. This is based upon a change they did back in 2012. And at that point, if you were 55 plus 15 years of service, you were grandfathered in to the GAT rate. So again, that GAT rate, what it is, is they look at the average, the 30-year treasury average at 95%. So it's going to generate a lower rate uh, or a lower interest rate that's used for the lump sum. So fast forward here in 2022. Um, if you want to be grandfathered, or, if, or to be grandfathered, you have to be able to make it to age 65 and have 25 years of service by the end of this year, so the end of December 31st. Um, so next year in 2023, it's going to be 66 and 26. So again, uh, if you're older and you've been there for a long time, you could possibly be grandfathered. And it's important to know that because those interest rates react a little bit differently from the segment rates. Um, so again, if you have questions, want us to show you how to do this and model the pension, we can show you uh, where this falls in line as well. Uh, let's see. Um, I'm thinking about retiring in the next few months. When do I have to elect and submit my pension forms? Okay, so this goes back. Actually, let me kind of uh, elaborate on the grandfather too. A little bit another difference on there is that the grandfather employee can actually uh, commence their benefits on the next day if they want to. Uh, so theoretically, if they want to get out for the uh, the fourth quarter, uh, but as I showed you on that previous screen, the fourth quarter and the and the first quarter next year are really no difference as far as the uh, interest rates for them. Uh, one difference would be the aging. The older you get, the smaller your lump sum gets everything else held equal because you're getting closer and closer to, unfortunately, your date of death. So it reduces that calculation figure. But what's going to happen for the grandfather, they could go, for, uh, for instance, December 30th and get out on December 31st. Uh, however, most individuals that are not grandfathered, you have to commence your benefits on the 1st. So you'd have to get out uh, you know, by that prior month, essentially. So November 30th to get there for December 1st. If you want to get out for uh, you know first quarter, it's going to be February 28th, so you can get out for uh, March 1st. Otherwise, you roll into the second quarter. So again, as far as doing that, uh, now Exxon tells you they they want you want you to elect this 90 days out, so it gives them enough time to do the paperwork. Uh, however, you can elect it closer to your retirement date. The only difference on the paperwork is the processing time. So let's say, for instance, you said you know it's November and I want to get out November 30th, and you kind of make that decision last minute. Yes, you can do it and you can lock in the interest rates, but it still may take a couple months for them to process the paperwork. So you may not get your pension check, whether it be the annuity checks coming in or your lump sum until about uh, you know two to three months out. So you may not get that till February or so. So really that's just the processing time frame associated with that. So another question, uh, if rates continue to rise, will it affect my pension annuity? Uh, how about my lump sum? 
Okay, so we've we've obviously talked about this quite extensively over the year. These rising interest rates and how it's affecting that uh, that lump sum, uh, and we've always told you it does not affect the annuity. So again, the uh, but there's a little bit of a potential change in, in that uh, in that that uh, that conversation, if you would, uh, I'll kind of uh, uh, touch on here. But generally speaking, when the interest rates change, like we showed you, that seesaw pattern is going to affect that lump sum. So when the interest rates go up, your lump sum is going down. If interest rates start to come back down, eventually they'll probably you know level off and maybe come down a little bit, but we'll probably get to long-term averages. We're not going to get as low as we were during the pandemic, obviously. But uh, as those interest rates change, so does your lump sum in an inverse fashion. Now, the annuity, as far as that payment, again, everything's calculated off of that. We mentioned, again, you have a, a, a calculation method to determine what that single life annuity is. And then from there, everything else is derived from that. So that annuity does not change with interest rates. However, there's a little caveat. Uh, we would have told you, you know, five, six months ago that, uh, you know, interest rates have no effect if you're looking at taking the annuity, uh, hang on as long as you want. Uh, however, uh, there's been a change because uh, if you were to look at the interest rates used for private annuities, so if you were to go out there and take your lump sum and get your own annuity outside of Exxon, whether it be through you know, a number of companies, you know, uh, Fidelity, Allianz, uh, you know, uh, Prudential, Lincoln, there's, there's all kinds of different uh, um, insurance companies you could use. The interest rates have been driving up those annuity rates. So in turn, we're seeing a lot of times where actually individuals are able to take the lump sum right now, that's still a little bit higher, and annuitize that themselves and get a better payment than what Exxon is giving them. We've never seen this before. This is a new feature. Uh, and it may be short-lived because we'll see what happens with these interest rates, but it's obviously worth reviewing if you're thinking about retiring in the near future and looking at that lump sum versus the annuity to at least see them uh, side by side. Another aspect there is it gives you sometimes more control where you can have a, uh, you know, you can do a different period certain or you can have a cash refund. So that way you at least know your uh, lump sum is guaranteed, uh, whether you want cost of living adjustments. There's a lot of different features you can look at, but again, that's a one-on-one -on -one situation to kind of dig into your uh, specific numbers. Another question here, uh, can I take a partial lump sum and partial annuity? Uh, this is actually a, a very unique and good feature Exxon brought about uh, back in, I think it was 2015, I believe. Um, we work with a lot of companies and, and you know, not many companies that all give you a feature like this. So what happens is back in 2015, Exxon changed it so that instead of just an all or nothing, all annuity or all lump sum, you have the option to go in there and break it out between 25%. So you can take 25% annuity, 75% lump sum, 50-50, or uh, the inverse, you can take a 75% lump sum and a 25% annuity. Uh, this is a great way to actually plan because a lot of times you don't need the full annuity to meet your income needs. And if you took the full annuity, uh, that on top of Social Security, you might be making more income than you need and in turn overtaxing yourself because you might bump up into a higher tax bracket. So we actually uh, want to review those with you. In some cases, it may make sense to uh, do 50-50. So that way between Social Security and half of your Pension being an annuity, it's going to give you enough income for your essential needs. Maybe only 25% you need. Uh, or again, we look at that aspect and we look at 50-50, but in reality, you might be better off taking the full lump sum, uh, rolling it over, and annuitizing 50% of it on your own. So there's a lot of different parameters there to look at. But yes, the answer is you can split that option up, and that's a unique feature to uh, Exxon Mobil we don't see with many other companies. Okay, how about uh, I'd like to make investments outside of the Exxon Mobil 401k plan. How do I do that? Uh, okay, I can go through a, a number of scenarios here, but uh, let me kind of focus on first and foremost, we were always talking about retirement. So with ExxonMobil, it's a very, uh, there's some good and bad about the 401k plan. Uh, I've been, you know, I've been doing this for over 20 years and I spent a lot of time at Fidelity where I looked at a lot of different 401k plans. Um, but uh, this is the cheapest 401k plan I've ever seen uh, um, across the board. But with that being said, it's also one of the most limited as far as investment choices. You don't have that many. A couple index funds in there, you've got the common assets, and you've got the, uh, uh, the ExxonMobil stock. So you don't have too many choices. Also, there's a little bit of uh, limitation as far as accessibility to that. You really can't uh, touch it until you retire unless you've got some after-tax money in there or maybe a rollover from another company. But what happens is choices outside the 401k, usually once you decide to retire, that's when you have that option to either keep it in the 401k plan or roll it over to an IRA. So obviously, if you roll over to an IRA, you've got a lot more choices available to you. You've got the ability to do these on your own or work with a company like the retirement group or someone else to help you manage those assets or kind of give you a hand in allocation approach as well. So that's one of the choices if you have that money in the 401k to move it out. Another option is if you've been building up your after-tax, or even if you haven't, we might have a conversation about the benefit of doing that as far as a backdoor Roth option, because there's limitations to how much you can put in a Roth IRA each year. 
but you can actually uh, increase your uh, after-tax contributions to your Exxon Mobil 401k plan. And you've got two options. You can take that out as cash if you want to without, uh, without a, a penalty or taxes, put that in savings, do something with it if you need to, or better yet, if you don't need it, actually roll that directly over to a Roth IRA so it starts to grow tax-free as opposed to tax-deferred. So if you put in, let's say you've accumulated $50,000 in your, um, your after-tax portion, and that stays in the Exxon Mobil 401k plan, and let's assume maybe in 10 years it doubles, grows to 100,000, that 50,000 in growth is gonna be taxable eventually when you take that out. However, if you had moved that over to the uh, Roth IRA, that 50,000 of growth, as long as you're over 59 and a half, you know, it's been there for five years, it's gonna be tax-free. So a big tax differentiation and savings there is one option. And then on, on top of the 401k, if you're maxing that out, or if you want to save outside of that, that's where you can look at obviously other investment vehicles, uh, whether you qualify for a Roth IRA, uh, whether you do regular IRAs or whether you just do uh, you know brokerage accounts or things of that nature, uh, maybe life insurance planning, all, all those options are available. But again, this really kind of comes down to a one-on-one -on -one basis. But the answer is yes, you do have some choices outside of 401k, but it's limited as far as uh, you being able to move that over at different times or uh, you having excess funds in order to invest that way. But if you have questions on this, give us a call and we can dig into it uh, with you. Uh, question six, I heard there are some tax laws that allow me to reduce the taxes on my Exxon Mobil stock. How do I take advantage of those laws? Uh, okay, so this is referring to uh, NUA, which is net unrealized depreciation. This is something that's been very prevalent with ExxonMobil for quite some time. Um, it wasn't so much uh, during the pandemic when the stock price dropped uh, precipitously, but now that's back up and, uh, and up to one of the highest levels it's been. It's definitely something that's beneficial for you. However, there are some pros and cons to that, and I'll, kinda, I'll give you a quick background and then go over that. Um, but uh, basically speaking, what happens is with that 401k plan, assuming you got pre-tax money in there, whenever you decide to roll that over or decide to take withdrawals from it, it's all going to be taxable. Uh, whenever you physically take that money out. So if you take withdrawals from the 401k or you roll it over and take withdrawals from the IRA, it's all gonna be taxable. However, if you've got low cost basis Exxon Mobil stock, there's that treatment of net unrealized depreciation where you can actually have a different tax treatment and pay taxes on the cost basis, but long-term capital gains, which right now and historically has been lower than ordinary income taxes on the growth. So let me do a quick basic example. Let's assume that you've got a value of about $100,000 of Exxon Mobil stock um, in your 401k plan and you look at it based upon your contributions and Exxon's contributions it's only you've only put in let's say $25,000 so the cost basis is $25,000 it's grown by $75,000 to $100,000 if you didn't know anything about NUA and you just uh, took those withdrawals or rolled it over and took withdrawals down the road that full $100,000 uh, would be taxable as you take that out however with NUA you can actually uh, pay taxes on the $25,000 lock that cost basis in and then the growth, the 75,000 or fast forward in a couple years, if it's worth more, is gonna be long-term capital gains and not ordinary income. So the long-term capital gains taxes, depending upon your tax bracket, could be either zero, 15, or 20%. Now, obviously this can change in the future as well, but historically it's always been lower than your tax bracket. So let's assume somebody in the 12% tax bracket, depending upon uh, how often they exercise that um, those capital gains, they could be in the 0%, so you could save 12%. If you're in the 22% bracket, you'll be in the 15% long-term capital gains. So you could save 7%. So there is some significant savings there. However, just be aware if you can get us a copy of your statement, usually that fourth and fifth page will give us that cost basis structure so we can run an analysis for you. Um, but the process is a little bit tedious. Uh, you're going to, whenever you, uh, whenever you retire and if you want to exercise this, what happens is you actually uh, transfer that over to Computer Shares, who's the uh, transfer agent for ExxonMobil. Takes about a month to kind of do that process. And then from there, you can sell it eventually, or you can move it over to your own brokerage account and sell it from there. Uh, so you are going to be semi-locked into the stock for a period of time. So in some cases, we've run this review for people in the last year or so, and even though it was some potential tax savings, it was not enough to justify locking that uh, that stock up, especially with the fluctuations we we saw in the summer. You know, kind of creeps up to 100, falls back to to the high 80s, creeps up to 100, falls back to the high 80s. Here we are now. Uh, we've been consistently over 100 at least. Uh, but obviously, you want to compare the uh, the market fluctuations, uh, what your long-term intent is versus the potential tax savings. But we can go through that full NUA analysis with you. Excuse me, full NUA analysis with you there. Um, question seven, I think this might be the last one. Uh, is my ExxonMobil lump sum tax differently than the annuity? Um, so no, I mean, yes and no, I guess. But uh, essentially, again, the ExxonMobil pension plan as a whole is a defined benefit plan, which means it's a tax-deferred vehicle. So you will pay taxes on it when you take it out. So the annuity, you're going to be getting a monthly payment for yourself or your family. And each time you get that monthly payment, it's just like an income check, you're paying taxes on that. On the lump sum, however, 
Uh, if you decide to take the entire thing as a cash out to you, yeah, you'd pay taxes on it, but you don't want to do that. That's a big mistake, especially if you have a, have a sizable one, because what's going to happen is that's going to bump you up into the highest tax bracket, cost you more in taxes. Generally speaking, on the lump sum, what you're going to do is you're going to roll that over into an IRA or possibly in the 401k, but most, most people do it into an IRA for more flexibility. So you roll it to an IRA, there's no taxes whatsoever on that transfer because it's a tax deferred vehicle to another tax deferred vehicle. Now, fast forward, if you start taking income from there, whether you take a withdrawal or you take monthly distributions, that's when it becomes taxable, just like the annuity was. So again, it's all about when that money comes to you, hit your checkbook or hit your bank account. So as you take withdrawals on both of these, it's gonna be taxable and it's all based upon the income tax bracket uh, that given year. So that's where if you look at, um, I roll it over to a lump sum, a lump sum over to a uh, IRA. If you're working with us, uh, we can actually walk you through and, and manage those tax brackets for you. We do that. We run a review every November, December to kind of see where the taxes are for each person uh, at that point in time uh, to assess whether it makes sense to take out more or less in order to kind of get you up to the top of that tax bracket, especially also looking at Roth conversion options in order to slowly get some of that money out of the IRA and into a Roth IRA so it grows tax free like we talked about before. So there's definitely some benefits there on the uh, flexibility with that lump sum. But at the end of the day, as that money comes out, they're both taxed uh, to you as well. So we've covered a lot of different questions. And I know there's probably some more questions you have, uh, especially pertaining to your own situation. Uh, but at the end of the day, our advice is to uh, obviously run that cash flow analysis uh, with us. Even if it's been a year, we've seen a lot of changes between the market uh, as well as interest rates and changing those lump sum projections. Uh, and like I mentioned, even if you're thinking about that annuity, the interest rates have driven up outside annuities, so it may be worth looking at that. From an apples to apples standpoint, we're seeing uh, some better options outside. So just to give us a call uh, you know, to schedule a meeting um, and spend some time to run that cash flow analysis with us. Uh, like I mentioned before, it's not gonna take too long to run that. Uh, right now, about three fourths of Americans uh, out there, over 50 don't even have a written plan. If you can spend about maybe 10 to 15 minutes, we'll gather a little bit of data from you. Uh, or you can even email it to you and you can respond that way if you wanna, sp wanna spend more time of your own uh, gathering the data. Um, we can put that report together in about a week or so uh, and run through a quick, re uh, a good review with you and show you extensively what that looks like, not just now, but in 10, 20, 30 years down the road as well. So you can have a better decision process in making that, that, that choice of when to retire. Um, and we can run various scenarios, whether you want to look at retiring now versus two or three years out, whether you want to take the pension as a lump sum versus annuity versus split, all those different choices so you see what your options are and that can help you through that process. And uh, at the end of the day, we run this very conservatively and we will not shy away from telling you, hey, you need to work longer or if you want to retire now, you might need to go back, go out and find a part-time job or something like that. So we will uh, we'll be uh, upfront and honest with you about it instead of just uh, you know, telling you, hey, everything's in great shape. We, we do this from a conservative standpoint, not an optimistic standpoint. At the end of the day, like I said, the best way to kind of really answer your specific questions, if these didn't cover them, um, or you want to dig into an actual review of your 401k plan or that, uh, that retirement transition, just give us a call at 1-800-900-5867. You can also reach us at info at the retirementgroup.com. If you've got your uh, cell phone handy, we'll leave this up here for just a moment, but we got a couple QR codes on there. Uh, you can actually uh, either follow us on LinkedIn, specifically to the Exxon Mobile page, so that way you can get updates on these quarterly interest rate updates, changes to the company plans and things like that as we uh, as we release them. And then also if you'd like to schedule an appointment with myself or any of our other Exxon Mobile focused advisors, you can use that QR code to get into our calendars and schedule an appointment. Or again, just give me a call if you'd like to schedule something sooner rather than later, because uh, uh, I think that QR code brings you to our calendars and allows you to book about a week out. But if you need something sooner uh, because it's urgent, just give us a call and we can do that for you. And again, just a quick reminder, uh, if you have any questions, call us at 1-800-900-5867. But again, we've worked extensively with ExxonMobil employees, helping them transition into retirement. But also, again, at the end of the day, we are not employed by ExxonMobil, nor are we endorsed by them. However, if you have any questions, we'll be happy to shed some light on those and at least give you all the information you need to make the appropriate decision as to when's the best time for you to retire. So I want to thank everybody for spending a little bit of time going through those questions. And if you have any more, just give us a call. But otherwise, hope you have a great day.